All right, YouTubers, welcome back to Team Dragon Lords. I'm here with my best friend and brother, Robbie, and he is about to show his deck review of the Crimson King. He calls it his... Please pardon me, YouTube, but it is called The Hell Deck. And by the way, this is a $30 budget build. Well, 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 technically it's a little over 30, but it still works. Thanks to my buddy here, he was able to actually give me a deck list of everything that I would need out of it. Since I had to get like three, three exact copies of the deck, but it is from after I was done building this thing, it is a maelstrom of a deck. And also, like we do for every single one of our videos, make sure uh, that you like and subscribe to our channel. It helps us out very, very well, and it will allow us to actually do many more videos like this. Exactly. Along with duels and all that other good stuff. But we'll, but we'll also be doing doing like, like other games on this, on this channel. I mean, we're not just about Yu-Gi-Oh, of course. We got, like, Cardfight Vanguard. Oh, yeah, totally. Look at that beautiful dead box. Yeah, I spent uh, 40 bucks at this at the card at the local card shop over at Jay's. And those are his sleeves that he got for his overlord deck. Overcooked dead fish. <laughs> <laughs> but, I feel so bad for it. But I really like this. Uh, also comes with a tray that I can use for like um, the power bonuses and whatnot. If when I can, but I am. We are going to be doing a video with this deck in the next video for sure. But for now, we are going to get into this deck. And, oh yes! And here we go. So the first thing, of course, whenever we are doing like like deck pro profiles, of course we help. I mean, of course, we have to begin with the monster cards because that is like the number one big thing. So. Okay, so for my deck, I'm I will be running three copies of the Soul Resonator. This card is freaking insane, guys. I mean, so basically, if this card were to be normal summoned and or special summoned, you can add one level four or lower fiend type monster from your deck to your hand, except for like another copy of it. You won't be able to do any other special summonings from the extra deck except for dark synchro monsters, but it is well worth it. Running three copies of this bad boy, you can basically just get get into some of your big old synchro plays, like your regular synchro monsters or your double double tune or triple tune. It just it's it's just insane, especially with the multiple combos that you can do, just like you've seen with my video that we did last Sunday. Oh yes, and it's this deck is this card really really does a trick as three copies. Next up, I'll be running three copies of the Crimson Resonator. And of course, if he and of course, uh, if I have no other monsters on the field, I can special summon this guy to the field. And if the only other monsters I have out on the field is exactly one dark dragon synchro monster, I can just automatically special summon this bad boy to the field. And and then I can special summon up to two resonator monsters from the hand and or deck. This card is also insane for for some of your biggest synchro plays or for any other combos that, that you may have. So for other people that, that might have another build exactly like this but might, but might have it exactly different, they might play maybe like two copies of this card or maybe one, I decided uh, to, but I decided uh, to go with three because it seems to be the more logistical option. Definitely. And I love how the artwork, each, every card there is, is just really stunning. Absolutely. The only thing I wish they would add in this structure deck was a Hot Red Dragon Archfiend. Um, oh, the yeah. The Tyrant version. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Tyrant Red Dragon Archfiend. That would have been super cool. That would have been nuts, and I could... And the, that would be, yeah, really nuts, and seeing how people can do combos with that as well. Oh, yes. So now I'll be running three cop—I mean, two copies of Vision Resonator. 
basically, I mean, I mean, basically, I mean, I mean, you just take a look at this monster and you would think, okay, he has some of the symbols from some of Carly's uh, fortune ladies. That's how you can actually tell about how different Vision Resonator is because he has some of those kind of kind of attributes to it. And I mean, with his special like ability, if a level five or higher dark monster is on my field, I can automatically special summon this guy to the field. Mm -hmm. Instantaneous summoning. And it's also its other effect is once it's sent to the graveyard, you can basically add any spell or trap card that mentions uh, Red Dragon Archfiend. Oh yes. Or a uh, Red Dragon Archfiend card itself, like like the, King Calamity or any of those other cards. Exactly, including um the scarred of Dragon Archfiend. Yes, that dragon is oh my gosh. <laughs> you talk about some killer power. Man, I love these resonator monsters. And after after looking at this deck before doing this video. Mm-hmm. And looking through it all, yeah, I'm totally screwed. Five ways from Sunday. Oh my gosh, I've never thought I would ever hear it out of Josh's mouth. Because <laughs> when you're looking at it from a different perspective, you can see that that deck is terrifying. So I am also running two copies of the Red Resonator. Of course, we all have seen Red Resonator in action plenty of times from Josh. And for me, sometimes, since I only had the one copy of a Red Resonator, but Red Resonator is super, super sweet, because as soon as he is normal or special summon, you can special summon one level four or lower, lower monster from your hand, and when this card is special summoned, you can target one monster on the field, regardless of where, of where it is at on the field, and then you gain light points equal to that monster's attack points. So if I had my Red Supernova Dragon on the, on the field, and his attack points were, say, 8,000 attack points... I would gain the 8,000 light points instantaneously. But running two copies of this thing? It's good enough. Basically. Yeah. Three copies for some people. I'm pretty sure there might be some duelists that, that are probably running three copies of this guy in their deck. I'm only running the two because I think that is more than enough power. Because if you were to have these two on the field with Red Supernova Dragon on the field, you would be gaining 16,000 life points right then and there. Definitely. But from, from my deck, I'm only running the, the one. Right, yes. Because who doesn't love the danger? Yes, the danger! <laughs> I'm also running two copies of the Synchron Resonator Monster. Another piece, piece of Jack Atlas's Resonator Engines. Which, I mean, I will have to say that Jack Atlas and his Resonator Monsters, don't get me wrong, they are phenomenal. So, of course, with the Synchron Resonator, if a Synchron Monster is on the field, you can Special Summon this card directly from your hand. You can only Special Summon Synchron Resonator once per turn this way. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one Resonator Monster in your graveyard, and then you can add it to your hand. So, basically, if you are already running low... On some of your tuner monsters, and you want to be able able to extend some more synchro plays, you'll be able to actually get some of your you'll be able to get some of your resonators back from your graveyard, maybe like Crimson Resonator or your Vision Resonator for more synchro plays, or if you really want to get into your more bigger synchro plays like your Red Nova or your King Calamity. But synchro re but Synchron Resonator as two is plenty. You don't need much much more after that. And that is actually the sad truth and terrifying. Pretty much, yes. I'm running two copies of one of my favorite Resonator monsters that Jack Atlas ever summoned, in which case you may have seen it in the second season of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, is Creation Resonator. If you control a level, level 8 or higher Synchro monster, you can automatically special summon this guy directly to the field. So if you had your Red Dragon Archfiend on the field, plus another level 1 Tuner monster... And you want to be able to bust out cre Creation Resonator for your double tunes or triple tune plays. This is the monster you really want to go with. Exactly. Plus, I just take a look at his uh, design and he's got like that pinwheel going for him. <laughs> it's a pinwheel. <laughs> it's just, it's so cool looking. Plus, he just looks like a little, little teeny tiny gremlin angel. <laughs>
I'm so sorry, Jack Alice, for making fun of your one resonator. <laughs> I'm not. No! <laughs> I'm running three copies of the Bone Arch Fiend. Now, this guy, he actually does a really, really good job. If this card is in your hand and or in your graveyard, you can send one other card from your hand or field to the graveyard, and then you can special summon this card. But you, but also, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn, except for Dark Dragon Synchro Monsters, which is basically what our deck is mainly running with. There are no Exes monsters. There are no Link monsters or fusions or anything like that. No. Just synchro monsters. You can target one phase of monster you control that has a level. That has a level. Send one thing tuner monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard. And if you do, increase or decrease that monster's level by one. Basically, if you want to go for any of your like oh. more smaller synchro plays, like your red rising dragon, there you go. And now here's the thing: you can either decrease the level of your bone arch fiend or say, uh, your Soul Resonator, and you can still bring out Red Rising. But if you really want to, you can increase the level. Oh, yeah, you can also increase the level of any of your monsters by one and still bring out your Scar Dragon Archfiend. Yes, exactly. Plus, I mean, Bone Archfiend is, is a better-looking version of the Mad Archfiend anyway. He's just a better-looking upgrade. Yep. Just better looking. I like him. He's a mean son of a gun. He's mean. Feeling very, very mean. Running three copies of the Wandering King Wild Wind. You guys have seen this guy in Josh's deck, decks before. Of course, we all know how awesome he really, really is. The Wandering King Wild Wind monster, anyway. If you control a Fiend's Tuner monster with 1,500 or less attack, you can special summon this card from your hand. If summoned this way, you cannot special summon monsters from your extra deck for the rest of the turn, except for Synchro monsters. Then, during your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, and then you can add one Fiend Tuner monster with 1,500 or less attack from the deck to your hand. But you'll be able to also go for some of your big synchro plays if you if you have this guy out on the field. Yep. I mean, this guy... I mean, I can remember when, when Josh first summoned this guy, and I'm like, okay. I know that he can be used for synchro plays, but who would have thought that he could actually take Wandering King Wildwind into a different perspective? And when I was building my first uh, Red Supernova deck before a Crimson King came out, I had a not so much good time trying to put it all together. Believe us when we say this, it took him painstaking time it took to me. figure out what he really wanted to put in, in into the deck. Truth is, it put me not one hour, not two hours, but it took me three days just to have that deck built. Yeah. This mother trucker right here, guys. It took him three days. And no, I didn't buy the cards uh, one after another. I bought a couple boxes. And I, and I was surprised that I got Red Supernova Dragons twice in two different boxes. Yeah. That made my day. Red Supernova Dragon is a beast. He's the main beast. And now for one of our favorite old monsters that has made her grand return to the dueling stage is, of course, Witch of the Black Forest. We all know what she does, but but since this is her, like, errata version, of course, she still works like she normally does. As, as soon as she goes uh, to the graveyard, you can search through your deck for a monster with 1,500 or less defense from the deck, and then you can add that monster to your hand. But so, you can also use her for synchro plays as well, if you really want to, but her effect will still go off as soon as she goes to the graveyard. Which is a, which is a great way to have a deck searcher. Yes, a perfect deck searcher. I'm glad that they came back with the reprint of Witch of the Black Forest. Oh, yes. yes. That is one of my number one favorite cards. Absolutely. I mean, she does a terrific job when it comes to deck searches. 
And I'll be running three copies of the Askator Don Walker, the only level five monsters in the deck. And of course, with this card, you can discard one card, special summon this card from your hand in defense position, Then and then afterward, you can special summon one Fire Ant Ascator from your hand or deck. You cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of this, that from the extra deck, the turn you activated this effect, except for Synchro Monsters. So as soon as one Ascator Dawn Walker leaves the field, of course, you can all, I mean, of course, you can use this for some of your biggest synchro plays out of the entire game. You could just use this with just one level one tuner monster. You can get, you can get your Red Rising Dragon. Or you can go with your level, or you can get your level twos, get them into level nine, or any of the other big, 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 big synchro plays. And this card is a really good effect because you can bring out your, uh, your uh, Cassiter uh, Fire Ant. Yes. And bring out level eight synchro monsters that way too. Oh, yes. And really putting your opponent in the corner. Yes, right through the floor. And then the one copy of the Fire Ant Ascator. So as soon as this card le so uh, so and so basically as soon as this little, little guy le leaves the field by battle or send and send to the graveyard, you can target one level five monster in your graveyard. Special summon that target, but its effects are negated. Also send it to the graveyard during the end of the turn. Basically, I just take a look at this little guy, and I just remember everything that from Rex from Rex Goodwin with you say Jack and Crow in their final duel. I see this little guy, and of course, he only got used the one time. Pretty fun effect. Of course, you can always use it for some of your other big... Of course, you can use this little guy for some of your other synchro plays. Even your much more smaller synchro play for like Red Rising Dragon or any of the other cards that are in your extra deck. But definitely this little guy as a one of. This is going to be my favorite ant friend of all time. I can still remember when this card was first brought out in Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Towards the end of the first season. When Rex Goodwin brought it out. And I'm thinking, eh, not a bad looking monster. Don't know if it will ever be printed. And by God, it got printed. And I mean, it got printed really, really good. I mean, just looking at this monster and you would think, okay. Might not mean much. But he's still a tuner monster. You can go for some of your big synchro plays with it. All right, that is the end of our monsters. Let's go right ahead and get into the spells. So for the spells, I'll be running three copies of the Crimson Gaia. This continuous spell is ridiculously strong. So, of course, and so, of course, during your main phase, you can add... One Red Dragon Archfiend and or one card that mentions it from your deck or graveyard to your hand except Crimson Gaia when your Red Dragon Archfiend declare, um, well, as soon as it declares uh, um, an attack, you can change all monsters your opponent controls to face down defensive position. If a monster on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon one Red Dragon Archfiend from your graveyard. Running three copies of this card is ridiculously strong because then, as because... That is basically a board wipe, because we all know how Red Dragon Archfiend goes, because as soon as he destroys a monster that is in that is that is in defense position on your opponent's side of the field, he will automatically destroy all monsters that are in defense position. But Crimson Gaia literally just makes it that much more difficult to make a comeback. And I mean, as soon as you get one board wipe, it's gonna be a whole lot more difficult just to get just to try to get your field to be back up and running again. I mean, when Josh first brought out Crimson Gaia, I'm thinking, oh boy, I got screwed. And I mean, I got screwed with this card. Oh yeah, definitely. And I mean, when, cause I mean, when I first saw this card's card art, I'm thinking, wow, that is the exact same image from the, from one of the openings of Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 from the Japanese version. Because when I first saw this, I'm thinking, Jack Atlas is coming back with his Red Dragon Archfiend? And then suddenly he brings out a new version of Red Dragon Archfiend. I'm like, oh, okay. That works out too. Oh, yeah, that's right, Don. Uh, when, before the English dub of Arc 5 came out, I was just watching the Japanese dub. And it, I don't know, everything just in Japanese, it just seems better. And it's funnier. But when I first seen Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend, and then a couple episodes later, 
both Scarlet and Tyrant Red Dragon Archfiend came out, I'm like, oh my god, this is so awesome. Talk about a talk about a horrifying field. And at that exact same moment, I'm thinking of the song uh, Dragula by Rob Zombie. Oh my gosh, okay. That, okay, that's a good song to go with. That is a good song. Definitely a good song to go with. I'll be running three copies of the Resonator Call. Of course, we all know how this card works. You can add one Resonator Monster from your deck to your hand. Basically, just a... Of course, just one of our basic searchers. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Having three copies helps you out, gets your big synchro plays out. Nothing too crazy. Nope. Gotta love the simplicity. Simplicity rules in this duel. Running, also be running three copies of the Resonator Command. We all know how this card works. You can discard one Resonator monster, then and then afterward, and then afterward, you can add one level four Lore Fiend monster from your deck to your hand. Simple, just another card searcher. Just another searcher. Help you out with, just to, just to help you out to... Uh, with getting some of your big time plays. Mm -hmm. More big time plays. Gotta love it. And then the holiness of holiness when it comes to spell cards in this deck is one copy of the absolute power force. This yeah. card is insane. It has four special like abilities depending on which one you really, really want to use. Go right ahead, Josh. <clears throat> Talk about how mean this card is. This spell card is really deadly. So you can target one Red Dragon Archfiend you control. If that monster you control battles an opponent's monster this turn, apply these effects uh, until the end of the damage step. So basically, it, if I'm understanding this right, it gains all these effects that you can see on screen. Well, I mean, you can only activate, like, one of those car card effects. It doesn't say activate one. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, so it basically gains 1,000 attack. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects. If uh, it attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage to your opponent. And then the last effect, I think, is really sick, but awesome. Any battle damage your opponent takes from that battle is doubled yeah so that card is a beaut and that's why you only want to run one copy of that card in your deck because it's it's deadly enough and yet i run two in mine <laughs> yeah josh he's yeah yeah as you guys can see guys he's kind of mean he's mean and now let's run into the traps one copy of the Red Rain Trap card. This card is stinking sick, so basically, so as soon as this trap card is activated, it just destroys every other card that's out on the field except for the ones with the highest level. Mm -hmm. uh, the, wait, it doesn't, dis doesn't destroy it. It basically banishes it. Yeah, yeah. Yep, sorry about that. But yeah, it just banishes every other card that's out there on the field except for the ones with the highest level. And he, Instant board wipe. Yep. And the next trap card yep. is red zone. This card is really badass. So, for example, if you have red supernova dragon or your red nova dragon, this card will activate it and mm -hmm. allows you to bring it back on that turn. But you want to know something that's really, really, really awesome like about this card's design is that it, it literally reminds me of the Nazca lines. From the first season of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds when they when they were dealing with the Dark Signers. It literally looks like a freaking field ready for the Dark Signers. <laughs> one copy of the Fiendish Golem card. Definitely a really good one of, of the trap of this of this deck. So basically so basically what this card does is, is uh that you can target one monster on the field with 2,000 or more attack, banish it until the end phase of the next turn. And if you activated this card while you controlled Red Dragon Archfiend or a Synchro Monster that mentioned it, you can add one fan Fiendish Chain directly from your deck, deck, or graveyard. And now that is really badass. 
And then the last card is none other than Fiendish Chain. The Fiendish Chain. Chain. Basically, it's basically just like Shadow Spell. It just basically just stops your opponent's monster from attacking. Yep. It's it's just that dang mean. But in order to actually... But as soon as... But, but when it is destroyed, Fiendish Chain goes along with it. So just like Shadow Spell. And now for my favorite part. Before we get into the extra deck, he has this build. I'm looking at two similarities uh, a couple days ago between the uh, card fighter Toshiki Kai and Jack Atlas. Jack Atlas, crap ton of red dragon arch fiends. However, for Kai, he has so many different versions of Dragonic Overlord. Exactly. And it almost like it relates. Definitely agreed. Now, I love Dragonic Overlord. It is the badass unit ever, especially with its uh, cross ride form, the end. Oh, yeah. That dragon is evil. If those cards would, would have existed in Yu Gi Oh!, I'm pretty sure we would all be screwed right about now. <laughs> like beyond screwed. My f my favorite deck <laughs> that I have, and I haven't used it for years. I have it put away, but it is, um, Perdition Emperor Dragon Draconic Overlord the Great. I forgot about that beast. I can remember when Kai first busted it out back in the anime. Oh, holy crap! I love. Um, I thought I literally peed, peed myself because of that thing. <laughs> But I also love the Legion form of... Um, oh, yeah, the Legion monsters. I forgot about them. Yeah. Uh, well, creatures. Don't really, really call them monsters in that game, really. <laughs> uh, um, the other unit I like is the Grade 3 Perdition Emperor Dragon. Vor uh, Dragonic Vortex or something, oh, yeah. well, something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. When it's Legion and, say, your opponent brings out... A heal trigger. Well, that card is burned because all the effects are canceled. They all say bye bye. And I love the fact that you can take four cards back into the deck and then bring out that Legion form. Yes. Alright, now to the extra deck. My favorite part about every single deck build that anybody would ever ever do. Like say Team Samurai or or any of the other Yugi tubers that are out there. Of course, my favorite thing would have to talk about the extra deck. The extra deck is always killer. Oh, definitely. So for my deck, I will be running three copies of the Red Rising Dragon. Looking at this card, you think he might not mean much, but to some of us that actually have this build, you'd be like, I'm stinking terrified. Beyond terrified. Says it is Halloween time. Whoa. Mind if I read him out? Right, might as well. Alrighty. Go right ahead. He's a good boy. So, this is the reprinted artwork, shiny red rising dragon. He's a beauty. Requires one fiend tuner and one non tuner monster. When this card is synchro summoned, you can target one resonator monster in your graveyard and special summon it. You cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck. The turn you activated this effect, except Dark Dragon Synchro Monsters, which that's what this whole entire extra deck is. Oh, yeah. Now, during your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target two level one Resonator Monsters in your graveyard and special summon them both. Yes. So, yeah, again, it says right there, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard. So, you have to wait next turn on your next turn to banish this card to bring out the synchron resonators yes and he is running indeed three copies of these yes i mean i can remember when this first i mean i can remember when this card first came out and i'm thinking wait that is the exact same version of red dragon archfiend that jack feared when he was dealing with griger's little little brother when he was being being possessed in the Japanese version of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D, since we never got to see those episodes. But you actually still can't see the Japanese episodes on YouTube. 
Well, kind of, a little bit. Oh, really? I oh. watched all of them. Oh, nice. So I'll, be, so I'll be running two copies of the newest Red Dragon Archfiend in the entire Red Dragon Archfiend family, the Scarred Dragon Archfiend. Just look how beautiful he is. He's amazing. So this card's name name does eventually become Red Dragon Archfiend while on the field or in the graveyard. If this if this card is sent sent from the Monster Zone to the graveyard, you can special summon one Red Dragon Archfiend from your extra deck. This is treated as a synchro summon, and then and then well then if this card was sent to the graveyard as synchro material for a dark dark dragon synchro monster, you can destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls. Yep. And then it also says you can only use this effect of Scar Dragon Art Screen once per turn. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> but it's it's a great wave. And when we first seen the structured deck on yeah with Yu Gi Oh Wikipedia, I was thinking, holy smokes! And we're just and we're slowly getting the details of each and every card. Yes. It was in, it was literally nail biting, you guys. Oh yeah, we were like on edge, and we were looking it up on my computer that I have. Yes, and we're thinking, what could be popping up next? We don't know. And then of course we also ha have to run the the one and only Red Dragon Archfiend. Oh yeah, Jack Atlas is a true Ace soul monster. True soul. And we all know how Red Dragon Archfiend works, but to some people that may not know. Yep. After damage calculation, if this card attacked an opponent's defense position monster, destroy all defense position monsters during your opponent controls. Once per turn during the end phase, destroy all monsters you control that did not declare an attack this turn. This card must be face up on the field to activate and resolve this effect. Yeah, that is literally the only real drawback about that. But then again, Red Dragon Archfiend is so stinking iconic. Oh yeah, I hope they come out with a Yusei structure deck, nothing, yes. but like, nothing but like Stardust Dragon. Yes, bring on the dragons! I love the dragons. Now I'll be running two copies of the Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend. When I first saw this card in the anime, I'm thinking, "Holy crap, he is gorgeous!" Oh yeah, and here it is. Gorgeous. It Gorgeous. And yes, it's a common. <clears throat> that is the sad part about it. <laughs> uh, this card becomes Red Dragon Archfiend while it's on the field or in the graveyard. Once per turn, you can destroy many other special summon monsters, or special summon effect monsters, my bad, on the field as possible with attack less than or equal to this card. Then inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each monster destroyed. Yeah. Now, on uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, I actually have one card of this, and I'm running it with the Jack character. And it's just really insane. Like I said, I can remember when this monster was first summoned in the anime. I'm thinking, holy crap. I mean, you talk about some real, really harsh power. Now I'll be running two copies of the Hot Red Dragon Arts Fiend Abyss. This dragon is sick, you guys. So, and this is a quick effect. You can target one face-up card, card your opponent controls, negate its effects until the end fate, until the end of this turn. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target one to Uner in your graveyard, so you can summon it in defense position. You can only use the use it, its effect of Hot Red Dragon, Red Dragon Arts Fiend Abyss once per turn. Now this card is actually from the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's manga. Unfortunately, this card never made it to the anime. That's that's kind of sucky. No, but uh, with this card, um, I have in my king deck, and also on Master Duels, on my Xbox that I play. I was going up against someone trying to use the monster Copycat. Oh no! Trying to copy my Red Supernova Dragon's attack points. And it was already at 10,000. And I'm looking at my life points. I'm thinking, crap, I'm going to lose. 
But then, last second, this card comes popping up, and I activate its effect, negated copycat's ability, and that opponent surrendered. Just like, like that. that. That I feel bad for that opponent, actually. It was funny. I'm... <laughs> I'm just sitting there in my room. I am laughing my butt off. He, the per, that person challenges me again. This time, I didn't use my king deck. I used my cypher's deck, and I crushed him. I screwed with my opponent so badly. I'm taking his monsters. I'm taking his blue eyes of all things. <laughs> Poor blue eyes. He surrenders again and messages me on Xbox and says, I give up. You just got insane deck builds. I'm like, most of my decks are from the anime. But thank you. Pretty much. That's how we like to look at it. <laughs> and now for one of my... Now, this one's going to be pretty, pretty fun. I'm running two copies of the Hot Red Dragon Arts Fiend Bane. He, too, is also from the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds manga. And he is pretty fun as well. You can... And so with his ability, you can tribute to some... Summon one monster, then tar- well, No, that I meant- I meant to say you can tribute one monster, then target one red- One red dragon arch fiend monster in your graveyard. Special summon it when this card inflicts- Inflicts battle damage to your opponent. You can special summon two tuners with the same level from your- So basically one from your deck and one from your graveyard in defense position. You can only use- Use, uh, each effect of this card once per turn. So basically, uh, with a combo that you can do with this, is that if you had discard the Red Dragon Archfiend on the field, you can just use this effect, send that monster to the graveyard, and bring back Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend or your or any Red Dragon Archfiend monster that's named, and still put off bad combos. And then once Scar Dragon Archfiend's in the graveyard, you can summon another or summon a Red Dragon Archfiend from your extra deck, which I think is pretty cool. Oh, yes. Once again, another manga-inspired manga, manga inspired Red Dragon Archfiend card. Yep, and I'm glad they uh, made this card yes. from the manga. Yes, he's mean. And what's really, really funny is that they only... is that he... is that Jack in the manga only had to use him in one, like, special... special duel against you, say. Now, for my newest favorite baby, this dragon is so mean. I'm glad I finally have it for my collection. The one, the only, Red Supernova Dragon. Oh, yeah. He's mean. He's powerful. And he makes everybody quiver. <laughs> I made my opponent crap his pants on the Master Duels, and I brought out two of these. <laughs> with Just with 8,000 attack points. And my opponent just lost so bad. I destroyed his only monster. <laughs> and then my other took out his life points with one hit. <laughs> but in order to do that to happen, I was facing him using, that he was using a Dark Magician deck. So after the first got done attacking, the second started to attack, and my opponent started playing a trap card. I'm like, how stupid can you get? Banish this. I banished all cards on the field that he had that were related to Dark Magician. Yeah. And then the final attack just... Poof. Just destroyed him. Instantaneous obliteration. So this card requires three tuners and one non-tuner synchro monster must be must first be special or synchro summoned gains 500 attack for each tuner in your graveyard cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effects so any card effects that you try to use to destroy it ain't gonna work at all think of it like superman yeah bullets bouncing off yeah pretty much that's how i like that's how i like to look at it now here's the real kicker. Once per turn, when your opponent's monsters declare, or once your, uh, forgive me on that. 
once per turn when your opponent's monster effect is activated or when your opponent's monster declares an attack. Quick effect, you can activate this effect. <laughs> banish this card, also banish all cards your opponent controls. Then once per turn during your next end phase after this card was, ban was banished by its own effect, you can basically bring this card back. Yeah, I'm glad I'm only running one of, one of this guy in my deck. Although in my buddy's king deck, he runs not one, but two copies of that card in his deck. Oh yeah. And, it, and it, it's hard to beat. He's hard. I mean, it's that dang hook tough. Yep. Running one copy of the hot red dragon archfiend, King Calamity. Now this card is also a beaut in its own way. Uh, requires two uh, tuners and one non-tuner dark dragon synchro monster. When this card is synchro summoned, you can activate this effect. For the rest of this turn, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects on the field. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this card's activation. If this card destroys a Monster by battle, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack. If this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can target one level 8 or lower Dark Dragon Synchro Monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Oh yeah. He is mean. He can make... He'll just make anybody cry. And now for the last card. The Peace de Resistance, one of my favorite bad boys in the entire game so far. And the one monster that I definitely made made Josh kind of quiver a little bit in our first virtual duel ever because of COVID-19. The Red Nova Dragon. We all know how he works. He gains 500 points for every tuner monster that's in the graveyard. You can banish it. Banish it if a monster if your like opponent's monster is actually stronger than it, and then he can and then he can just negate. I mean, he's he's just all sorts of sass. Oh yeah, he is sassy. When I watched the Japanese episode of it and yes. how Jack summoned, yes, br basically brought it out. I'm like, now that's a big buff boy. I was thinking for sure that Jack finally has the upper hand against the against the three emperors. But and he, he did he did defeat one uh member yeah. of Liliaster, which was insane. Oh yes. Definitely a very fun thing thing to see. And that my guys well 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 and that guys is my red dragon archfiend deck profile. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. Once again, please give us a like and subscribe, comment if you want to, yes. so that so that we can continue making videos like this when whenever any new decks are to come out or anything like that. I'm definitely looking forward to what comes out next. I think there's like a Fire King deck coming out at some point with a with like a Phoenix as its ace monster coming out soon, from what I understand. Did they call it the Fire King deck or something like that? I don't know. Might have to go a little, little bit further in depth just to check it out. And of course, I'm definitely looking forward to once that new booster pack comes out with all those new cards for you, Bell. Oh my god, I forgot about that card. That card, you, Bell, is evil incarnate. Yes. I mean, as soon as I saw a picture of you, Bell, I'm thinking they gave her new upgrades. Well, I'm terrified. I'm grateful I've never had to deal with you, Bell. And I hope I never do. I hope I never do, guys. And that's it for this video. And like my brother said, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And and yes, please share this video with your friends. And then, of course, if you guys ever have any other deck profile ideas to give us, Please give them to us through through like the comments section. That way we can see if we can make those happen or not. Yes, because I would be honored to do that. And I'm just and we're just needing uh thirty eight more subscribers so we can do this live instead of just pre recording. 
So please have your friends give those likes to us. I would be really appreciative to that. And you guys, I hope that you all enjoy your evening, no matter where you're at in the country. I just hope that you guys aren't living out here in the Midwest like we are. <laughs> yeah, it's just damn cold. 30 degrees. No, thank you. <laughs> well, guys, toodaloos. And see you guys in the next video.